Good morning, fellow gardeners. Well, we're going to invite you in to, to our little devotion this morning and uh, let you follow along with us if you want to. And this is entitled, Followers of the Lamb. And it said, I looked and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his name and the name of his father written on their foreheads, Revelation 14.1. That's describing the ones that are uh, ready to go home with Jesus, looking forward to him coming. It's, uh, it doesn't mean it's just exactly 144,000, but that is a number that represents those people that are looking for Jesus to come. Anyway, we, <clears throat> we're going to read here that the book of Revelation describes two prophetic groups. In chapter uh, 13 of Revelation, uh, that per portrays... Uh, those who follow the beast, you know, the lamb-like beast. While chapter 14 depicts those who belong to the lamb, which is Jesus Christ. So there's only two groups upon this earth. There's those that follow Jesus, looking for him to come back and, re and claim them. And then there's this group that uh, follow a beast, a false religion, a religion that's been changed back in history and... Uh, they claim to be God themselves. So anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit. The followers of the beast belong to a conspiracy that seeks to destroy the people of the Lamb. Yes, the people that follow the beast, they want to try to kill the one that follows the true God because they think that they can get rid of the followers of the true God and they will have an easier time. The followers of the Lamb, the ones who obey God's commandments and have their faith in Jesus, would rather die than violate the principles of the Lamb's kingdom. Their mouths are free from guile and falsehood. In other words, that's Jesus' followers. They follow him. They keep his commandments. They have the faith of Jesus and the faith in Jesus and that he's going to save them. And they'd rather die than, than change over and, and worship the, the beast, which is more popular. But anyway, they will sing a new song before the throne because they deeply appreciate the sacrifice of Christ having been purchased from this, blood, uh, from this earth. Yes, all of those that are looking for Jesus to come back, they have been purchased through Christ's blood. He gave his blood upon the cross to pay for our sins. The only way we can escape out of this old sinful world. Seventh-day Adventists have taught throughout their history that the second beast of Revelation 13 portrays the United States. And that's what it says, you know, that it's as a world superpower that will cause the rest of the world's inhabitants to worship the first beast. So uh, this beast, which is the United States, is going to join up with the Roman power to force all the other earth to keep this mark of the beast. So uh, anyway, we'll get into that as we go along. It is difficult to imagine America as a religious prosecutor, but that's exactly what's happening. We think America, you know, and it was, it was founded it was founded on, on freedom of religion back there whenever Columbus came and discovered America. And it, it was what it's supposed to be, but it's converted over now. Uh, and it's, uh, it's going to be a persecuting power now to persecute those that are worshiping God. You know, it was back there in the uh, early centuries, they killed millions and millions of Christians that wouldn't give up their Sabbath. You know, they, they tried to get them to force over to take the first day of the week, and they wouldn't do it. They, they'd rather die than give that up because they didn't want that false religion, and there was millions of them killed, and they put them in, in ditches and everything, just in trenches. But the scripture says that the beast representing America will force all to worship that first beast, which represents apostate Christianity. So the United States is going to join up with this False, false Christianity, apostate Christianity, which is Rome, and they're going to force the whole world. And you know, prior to the breakup of the USSR, communists were such a powerful force in the world that some doubted our interpretation of Revelation 13 as, as United States being the superpower that would join hands with uh, uh, apostate Christianity. And they ask, how can it be that the United States will become the world's superpower? But you know, overnight, the scene totally changed. 
Our, one lesson we can learn is that the final moments will be rapid ones. Things can change overnight. Overnight, nations and empires can collapse. And um, recent events have greatly strengthened our faith and our prophetic interpretation that we have developed through the decades. But the most important thing to know about prophecy is that we must remain followers of the Lamb to the very end. In other words, we can't give up. We've got to stay uh, with Christ, keeping the commandments and the faith in Jesus and not go over with the apostate Christianity. We must stay firm until the end. Uh, the three angels' message warns us against worshiping the beast and his image and symbolically receiving a mark on our forehead or in our hands. In order to maintain our allegiance to the Lamb, we must daily submit our wills to him and through prayer and holy, uh, the holy uh, study of the Bible, make certain that our commitment to him is based on love rather than fear. We can't love God and fear him at the same time. I mean, we can respect him, but we don't want to love, uh, serve him out of fear that we don't want to be lost because we've got to love him instead of fear him. Only love for the Lamb will enable us to triumph. Some wonderful day we will see the Lamb face to face. That's Jesus Christ. He will be back to get us. And praise God for that promise. We look forward to that time coming. And we thank Him for the privilege of being counted as one of His followers. And so we want to be ready when Jesus comes. And you know, these last days of our history are rolling so fast. And let me tell you what's going on right now. Some of you may not know it. I'm sure a lot of you do. See, just a couple of Fridays ago, on October the 22nd of this year, that was a celebra That was 177 years of, of uh, celebration that Jesus had been over in the Most Holy. I, back there in October the 22nd, 1944, Jesus moved from the Holy Place over into the Most Holy. He moved into the host, most holy so he could start going over the Lamb's Book of Life and everybody's name that was written in there, he was going to go over it, you know, to go over the books before he gets ready to come back. And so if you've had your names putting in the Lamb's Book of Life and it's in there, Jesus started back there in 1844, October the 22nd, going over the books. He started back there at Creation. And uh, that's what he's been doing for 177 years. And, uh, you know, that was, that was 177 years of that. You know, and, and Noah just preached 120 years that the flood was coming back there whenever he was building the ark. And uh, so anyway, lots of things are happening here in the last days. I know just this last uh, Friday, uh, President Biden went over to meet with the Pope uh, there in Rome to work out this climate control situation that they're, they're going to do for the whole world. You know, the Pope says the only way we're going to get this climate control under, uh, under uh, you know, under our control is, is to close the world down every Sunday. That's what the Pope's plan is, to close this down every Sunday. That gives the nation, the, 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 gives nature a, time, a day to rest. Well, God did set up a rest day back there when he created it. He said six days you shall work, and on the seventh day of the week you will rest, and all your manservants, your maidservants, your oxes and your cattle will rest. And that's what it was planned on, for it to happen. But back there in the third century, you know, in about 321, the Romans decided they want to change the rest day from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week. And that's what they did. They said they had the authority that they were God here upon this earth and they had the authority to do that and they changed it. God didn't give them authority. Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about changing from the seventh day to the first day of the week. But they did it. And lots of people wouldn't go over with them and they killed millions and millions of Christians there trying to get it to where there wasn't any seventh day keepers. They were all they wanted them all be first day keepers. You can study about this in history. Don't take my word for it. I mean it's it's in history books. You can read about it. 
Anyway, Biden met over there last, last Friday to set this climate control deal up, how it's going to work. And then November the 1st now, here they, uh, this year, the 120 nations are meeting <clears throat> to go over <clears throat> what Biden and the Pope has planned out for this climate control, how they're going to work this year uh, Sunday closing law to get the whole world shut down on the first day of the week. So they're going to be there meeting for about 10 days. And they may still be bidding when this comes out. It's going to come out here just about this, I think about the 3rd or 4th of uh, November is when this video is going to come out. And, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> see, they were going to have this meeting back when Trump was president, but he said he wouldn't go to the meeting. He would have no part of this climate control deal, this Sunday closing deal. So they put it off until they got Biden in as president. And now that's what they're doing. Uh, I'd already told you back in 321 AD, Rome did change the Sabbath from Saturday to the Sunday or from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week. You can find that in history books. They claim they have that power, that authority to do that. But you look in your Bible and it doesn't say anything about it in there. God says, I change not. God says, whatever I set up, it's going to stay that way forever. So, I want to take us to 1 Thessalonians uh, uh, chapter 4 and verse, uh, well, we're going to start in about verse 13. We'll read 13 through 18 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Talking about them that's already died, that you saw not, even as others which have no hope. He says, Those that die in Christ are buried in the ground. They have a hope. They're looking forward to Jesus coming back because but he says if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him, will bring forth. Whenever Jesus comes back, he will have them to come up out of the ground. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, when Jesus comes back, when he descends from heaven, it says in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. In other words, those in the graves will come out of their graves, be raised up into the cloud, and then we which are still alive on this earth, it says verse 17, and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So that's what we're looking forward to when Jesus comes back this second time. And he raises those dead out of the grave first. We're going to see this. We'll be able to see it. We're alive and we see him. We see him come out of the grave. And then we are brought, are brought up, caught up with him into class to meet Jesus. To go back to heaven with him to live forever, it says, with the Lord. And he says, first, uh, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Well, these are comforting to know that Jesus is coming back. And then let's go over to, uh, let's see, we want to go to uh, Mark 13, 35. Let's go over back over this and read this. This is a sharing. Uh, Mark uh, 13, verse 35. And he tells us to watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh. Uh, let's back up one verse and start again, and uh, we'll read verse 34, because we're talking about here when Jesus left and went to heaven uh, when he was resurrected there on that Sunday morning. It says, For as the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. In other words, when Jesus went back to, the, to, the, to heaven with God, he said, Watch for me. Be, take care of things. Tell others about the love of Christ. And I'll come back and get you. And so he says, Watch therefore, for you know not when the master is going to come back. At even, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or in the morning, or in the morning. But he said, Let's continue. Let's coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. So we want to be watching continually. Don't, don't be led astray. Always be looking for Jesus coming back. And what I say unto you, I say unto you all, watch. 
Jesus left here saying for us to watch. Look for his second coming. Have that blessed hope of his second appearing that we can go home with him when he comes back and live forever and ever and ever where there's no sin, no sorrow, no suffering, where the blind will see, the lame will walk. Okay, we're going to pray a little bit now and close this out. So as, if you don't mind, be with us and bow your heads as Judy and I pray. Loving Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you at this time and we just want to thank you for being our Father. And we thank you for Jesus that's willing to come to this earth and be born as a babe. And then he lived his life sinless here, but yet they put him down and killed him. But he didn't stay down. He raised again and went back to his father. And Lord, this signifies that he's going to come back and get us when it's time. He's going to come back to this earth with all his holy angels. He'll raise the dead first up into the clouds. And then those that are alive that belong to Christ that will be raised up into the clouds off of this earth. And we'll go to heaven to be with him forever and ever. And never to taste death again. The lame will walk and the blind shall see. What a glorious day that will be to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, just be with each and every one of us, those out there watching the videos and us here making the videos, and I pray that you'll be with each and every one of us. Help us to continue to be looking for Jesus because he's going to soon come back and get us. And we thank you, Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. If you like this video, punch the button, ring the bell, and we'll make you another one.